Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello. Right, really, really quick video, because uh, quite a few of you have asked me sh to show you how I do this. How do you clean your brushes? How do you keep them clean, uh, get all the paint out, and make them last as long as possible? Well, it's actually quite simple. If you've got brushes that look like this, <laughs> look at that. They've either all splayed out at the end, because that used to be pointy, or they've just kind of got a buzz cut and gone a bit random. Yeah, then it means you're not looking after them properly. Golden rules. When you store a brush, don't store it down like that, unless it's got a plastic tube. If you have brushes with plastic tubes when they get delivered to you, when you buy them and they have a plastic tube on the top, keep that plastic tube. And I'll tell you why in a bit. Anyway, so if you want to avoid your brushes looking like that and just becoming brushes for pastels and powders like these are now, yeah, how do you keep your brush clean? Very, very simple. Get yourself into a routine. First of all, get yourself some of this Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. There are other products out there. I haven't used them. I can only show you what I've used, which is the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. It's like $5 for one of these. It smells... Oh, it smells like... Oh, it smells like lemon cheesecake. Tell me you like that. It smells divine. Uh, it's $5 and it will last you a long time. I've had this for about six months now and I've worked my way down to the bottom, but there's tons around the edge. So what you do... Get yourself into a routine. When you finish painting for the day, always, 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 always clean your brushes. Now, this is based upon you using, well, any paint really, but especially if you're using things like water-based paints like Citadel or Vallejo, things like that. What you tend to do is you paint, 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 rinse your brush off, paint, 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 and then you rinse your brush off a few times on your tissue and you put the brush to one side. Okay, that gets some of the paint off. The reason things like this happen and all your brushes splay out is because A, of bad brush control when you're painting, and B, what basically happens is, this is called the ferrule, and all the bristles go into here and they're glued in, they're tied around and glued in. If paint gets into the ferrule, so into the between the brushes and down into here, what it does is it dries out, it dries, it becomes hard, and it pushes the bristles apart and you get this splayed effect. All the brushes go Bleh! like that because the, the crud, the paint gets in between the bristles and pushes them apart like that. So that's how I end up with splayed brushes. And I love that word, splayed. What you want to avoid is that, if, especially if you've got a brush that has a fine tip, like my very, very expensive, and I love them absolutely dearly, thank you so much, Chris and Paul, uh, Windsor and Newton Series 7 brushes. Especially if you're painting like miniatures, you want a nice point on your pointy brushes. Not so much on this, this is a dry, this is a base brush, but you still want to keep it clean. This could still splay out if paint gets down in there, and you can see it's a bit scruffy, but that's fine. Now this is a brush I haven't particularly cared for up until recently, so it's not the best example. This is not a brilliant brush, but I've managed to pull it back from the brink of destruction to keep it usable. All you do, when you're painting normally, like I say, if you're using water or whatever, that's fine, but at the end of the day, set 10 minutes aside, to fully clean them. What you do is you get yourself your pot of water or your glass of water or your cup, whatever you use. When you're using it during the painting session, always use cold water. Warm water will eventually damage the glue that holds bristles in. But when you're using a cleaner product like this, this masters, use warm water, not hot water, warm water. It's fine for this because you're only going to do it for a few minutes. Get yourself some warm water, get yourself your brush and you dip the brush in the warm water like that. Give it a good swizzle round. How annoying is that noise? It's annoying, isn't it? Are you annoyed yet? Give it a good swizzle round. Get the brush, get loads of water on it, and just simply touch it. Now, you might think this brush looks clean, but I was using this for gold paint earlier on today. And as we start to do this, you'll see, hopefully, if I do it on camera, it starts to pick up, or rather starts to come out of the bristles all the gold paint that normal cleaning with the water like you would when you're painting leaves behind now this brush before i did this looked clean you wouldn't know there was paint in there but there was and this is why this is a vital thing to do because even though you think your brush looks clean it probably isn't and the more paint that builds up 
in that ferrule and towards the base of the bristles, the worse. And that's where paint tends to hide. You can't see in, in the middle of all the bristles. So you rinse it out in your water, it looks fine. You put it back over time, that paint hardens and crusts and makes your brush unusable. So you can see there, I've got loads of Ming on there. I'm gonna get it in the middle and get a good lather working up. And that's that. So I'm gonna leave that for a minute, put it to one side. Now when you do this, what you don't wanna do is be jamming your brush in like this, especially if you've got a pointy brush like this. This is actually a, a base brush to get it pointed for you. Base brush that's knackered, but it's developed a hook at the end. Now that's actually handy for me. It's good for painting, so I want to keep that. So all I'll do, get it wet again, give it a good swizzle around. I won't jam it in. I'll simply, for these kind of brushes, I'll simply swirl it like that. I'm just about touching it to the surface. I'm not pushing down. It's just in the soap. Oops. It's just in the soap, and I'm just smushing it round without much pressure, just to get a nice lather worked up. And I'm just, you see I do it slowly, you can see I'm dragging it, but I'm not pushing it, I'm not bending the bristles where they don't want to go. Just being really gentle. Give it a good smush. Get some extra water. And the best way to think of brushes, for example, let's say you've got long hair. Perhaps you're a girl, or you're a boy with long hair, doesn't really matter. But you've got long hair regardless. Maybe you live in Germany and you've got that kind of mullet thing going on. I don't know. <laughs> well, there's a cultural stereotype. Um, my apologies. So whatever reason, you've got long hair. Now imagine you wake up on Monday morning and you wash your hair in cold water. And then you don't wash it for the rest of the week. And you have to go to work or school every day. And you haven't washed it for a week and it's a bit mingy and it's a bit stinky and there are things living in your hair and it's not pleasant and then when you take if you've got a ponytail you take your little bobble out and your ponytail stays where it is yeah that's that's what happens when you don't wash your brush properly these are just hair they're usually horse hair some of them if it's not synthetic it's only horse hair sable hair there's different kinds of hair but you know pig bristle it's all hair and all you're doing really is shampooing and conditioning so let's uh, let's put that to one side these have sat for a moment. Get your brush. I'll do it on the big one, it's easier for you to see. Get your brush, it's still got gunk on it, it's just working its way in. Give it a good rinse. Then what I like to do is just get my thumb and finger and just squeeze it out. And you can see there's still stuff in there. Now, when you when I brought this brush out of the wash just then, it looked clean. You didn't know all that stuff was in there and that's the point it's the same with paint if you just rinse your brush out in the in the in your brush water and at the end of the day and put it to one side you're not getting all that paint out from inside now i don't know what's in this stuff i'm guessing it's all kinds of like petroleum and things like that in there probably wonderful things that help remove paint i've had it remove paint from brushes that even isopropyl alcohol wouldn't take out so this stuff is strong it's not going to harm your brush, but it will take out the, the extra paint. So you can see there, still a bit of yellow coming off. So there's still paint in there. So what I'm going to do now is take my soap, get all that out. Give this another rinse. Now, if you do this every day, every time you finish painting, just the brushes you've used, so you can see there it's going brown again. If you do this every day religiously, then you should be able to Get your brush in the soap, whiz it round, give it a minute, rinse it out, and it'll be fine. This is only because I've, I've not washed this brush in a while. I've left it deliberately for this demonstration. So it's still got some residual glue in there, basically. So there we go. You can be a bit rougher with these sort of chisel brushes and things and big floppy brushes. You can munge them around a bit more. But with your pointy, pointy brushes, you want to be very delicate. So that's that in there. Give it a rinse. Do -do -do, do -do -do. Give it a squeeze. See, look, it looks reasonably clean. Do this. Look at that. All the mung coming out. That's all the stuff that you can't see. So we'll do that. Give it a rinse. There's still a bit of yellow on there, but I suspect that's because of the water. Because the water's gone a bit yellow with the gold. This was used to paint some retributor armour, so... Yeah. There we go. So that is now clean as... It's clean as brew. Sorry, Lincoln. So anyway, yes, so that is now done. 
the yellow on there is now just from the water it's not from the brush so that is now clean uh, now this is an old brush and it has already got paint embedded in there that i'm never going to get out so that's a lost cause this one isn't so bad but the thing is if you do this every day your brushes will last longer because what you're doing is you're getting out all the crap in the bristles that would pull the hairs apart or rather push the hairs apart and you're helping them stay conditioned and clean so what i like to do now is just get the bristles in my brow in my mouth make a little o with my tongue and bring it to a point and then that's done that's clean now storing your brushes is also important brush use when you're using a brush to keep your point and maintain your point in your brush don't push it down into the water and jam it on the bottom that makes the bristles splay out and that damages them don't store it like i said like that with the bristles painting down that's the worst thing you can do splays the bristles out they'll stick in that shape if you have a plastic tube then when you finish washing your brush this is where you need to keep the plastic tube i wish i'd kept the plastic tube for that when you've washed it and cleaned it put the tube back on and this time you can store it down the best way to store your brush when you've cleaned it is actually bristles down if you have a protective tube the reason it's better to store them this way bristles down is because any water that's in there with this soap and any remnants of paint will run down the bristles and drip off i mean they'll be dry by the time you put, you've dried it on the towel but anything that's in there it'll just move down towards the point and when you next use the brush it'll come out if you store them like this bristles up then all the water that's in that is in there that's still in there will just go down towards the ferrule and collect and over time it will deposit tiny particles of paint so i've got no choice with this. i can't store it bristles down so i'm going to store it flat like that for an hour or so while it's dry and then when it's dried out fully i can then go and put it in my paint rack and it'll be fine but ideally keep the plastic i can't find it i'm looking at the camera and i can't i'm looking at the camera and i can't tell depth on the camera it's like where is it keep the plastic tube because then you can store them straight out the wash store them like that the water drain off your bristles will last pointier will stay pointier longer and that's it that's all you need to do to keep your bristles going fine one other trick to enhance the life of your brush when you're picking up paint remember paint getting in the ferrule is the nightmare scenario when you're picking up paint and working with it try to only get paint say two-thirds of the way up the, the bristles don't get paint all the way up so it comes onto the, don't dip it in the paint and get it all up the ferrule because you're just pushing paint down into the ferrule then so try as best you can to not get paint more than say two-thirds the way up the bristles that way you're not pushing paint into the ferrule and when you clean it there's no paint in there for it to try and dislodge and get out so it just means your brush will last a bit longer so look after your brushes store them tip down if you have the, if the plastic tube don't jam them in don't squash them flat against the bottom of your cleaning cup or glass or whatever or don't jam them into here and squish them flat always keep them pointy give them a good clean and do this at the end of every painting session so if you've finished for the day clean the brushes you have used and put them to one side this stuff is more than worth it because at the end of a stressful day if everything's been going wrong you're painting and it's all gone to nonsense this has the most delightful smell i wish i could sm you could smell it it's just a nice calming it's like a it's like a lemon scented oil burner or candle or something it's like oh, it's so nice but that's going to do us thank you so much for watching i hope that's helpful get some of this you can get it on amazon e-models do stock it but i don't think they have any at the minute so but get some get it on amazon or ebay or anyway it was about five dollars or something like that but that's going to do us thank you so much for watching uh don't forget as always do go and join the boom hut if you haven't already model makers boom hut the best group on facebook for model making no snark no bitching no fighting no insulting no nothing we don't allow it if you get on there and you're all snarky and bitchy and rivet counter you just get killed uh, killed <laughs> whoa yeah we're not that bad whoa that's, that's a different group altogether we don't talk about that other group you get banned whoa, i can't believe i said killed you get banned so it's a good place you'll make a load of friends there and also don't forget if you'd like to it's completely optional you are more than welcome to help support this channel on patreon uh, this channel depends on my patreon supporters uh, who keep me in kits and income allow me to pay my bills and do this for my living so it's more than optional but do feel free to go and maybe offer your helping hand to keep this channel going but until next time take care of yourselves go do something awesome go be awesome go clean your brushes adios amoebas